In a previous video, I was doing some rework on a soldering kit that I had already assembled. And as part of that rework process, it seems I managed to damage the 555 timer and CD4017 counter chip that were in that project. And I have some timer chips here. So this is a 555 timer. And this one here is a CD4017 chip. Now, just because the chips are non-functional doesn't mean we can't do anything interesting with them. And recently, my brother sent me a new toy to play with. That particular toy is this item here. And this is a very high zoom camera that I can connect up to my computer. Now, this 555 chip that I have in front of me right here is actually not the original one that I damaged in that previous video. I've actually already gone ahead and decapped or disassembled that chip. And it's actually already in front of us on this table. And so what I'm gonna do is turn on this monitor here, which is connected to the camera. And if I manage to line this up just right, you will eventually see the chip come into focus. So let's see if we can find it on the table. And here we are. This is a 555 timer chip. Now, although this original chip was marked as Texas Instruments, this doesn't appear to be a Texas Instruments die. And if we look around online, you might be able to find some other pictures or die shots that show you this exact layout. And in particular, there is this little logo here. You can see with the X or a little cross, maybe a little bit like a salt tire maybe from the Scottish flag. And it has a little dot above it. So maybe that's trying to indicate a person or maybe it's just an X with a dot. And someone else has done a full decap and uh, stripped the die back so they can see the individual layers. And I'll insert that picture into this video. Now, what's interesting is this CD4017 that I have here is the original chip that I damaged. And I thought it'd be interesting to show you how I managed to disassemble my 555 and get the die out so that we could see it on this camera. So let's have a go together right now. So here we are in my kitchen and this is the CD4017 IC that we'd like to have a look inside of. Now, one way to separate the die from its resin casing is to heat it up to a high temperature, and this softens the casing and allows you to pull it away from the die that's inside. One way to do this is to heat it up over open flame, which explains why we're standing at my gas stove. Now, I'm not recommending you follow this process whatsoever, but this is a technique that I have previously used to create these shots you've just seen. So let's go ahead and light the stove. And I'm gonna turn it right down to a nice low level because I don't want to cause any issues. I'm also going to wear some gloves and I'm going to hold the IC with some pliers. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to grab the IC just in the pliers jaws and I don't want to get too much in the jaws because I'm going to heat this up over the flame and then once it's softened a bit I will grab the other end and crack it hopefully with the other pair of pliers. So let's uh, turn this up just a tad, not, not too much, and let's begin heating this up. So it's starting to soften, but it's not quite there yet. Okay, and we're starting to have pieces come apart, so that's why I've got this plate. Let's have a look. So I can see some bond wires, or more accurately, the frame that it's on. But I don't think we've quite got to the IC die yet. So I'm gonna to need to heat this up a little bit more. Okay. And it's important that we do this over something so we can catch the pieces in case the uh, bit we're trying to get to gets lodged in a different section. Okay, so no, that didn't get soft enough that time. Okay. So I think we have the die in this piece of plastic here. You can see it's just in here. 
So I'm going to need to see if I can get some tweezers or something to gently get that out of there, but we have now actually got to the die. Okay, and now I probably will be able to remove this just with some tweezers. So I think we're probably at a good stage now. So now I've finished cooking my plate of chips. Let's see if we can get that last tasty bit out of the wrapper. Now I'm just going to use a couple of pairs of tweezers here to go ahead and finish removing the dye. And I have to be very careful because we don't want to lose it and ping it around the room but um, hopefully you can join me. And I did just manage to flick that there just by chance, just out. And so now we have the die just here, although again, I expect it's probably not even possible to see it on the camera. So if I pop it here on the table, but what I'm gonna do this time instead is I actually have a penny here. Now I'm afraid I don't have a one cent coin for the Americans, but they are actually of a very similar size. So this will give you something to look for. But here I have a uh, Queen Elizabeth one penny coin. This one's actually a 1999 um, one, you can see here. We're gonna look at it very closely in a minute, but I'm gonna put the die on this coin just for scale. So the die is now on this coin just here. And I don't know if there's enough clearance, or there just about is that we can move this over the penny and hopefully we can see. So what I'm actually gonna do before we start is gonna zoom this right out because this has a range of 40 to 1000. And I'm gonna oh, try and hold that still, move this all the way down to the minimum zoom. And we'll look at our penny here. And we're actually over the penny right now. So let's zoom in a little bit until we can see some of the penny relief. And so this is the copper, at least the copper coating of the penny. And here is our IC. And so it's just next to the crown on the queen and the letter R here uh, for Reg. Here we are, see that you might recognize if you've seen a British penny uh, before. So I might want to just get the tweezers very slightly and tweak that um, as we go along. But let's go ahead and see if we can just zoom in. And I think the reason this is blown out is because I think this chip might currently be upside down. So if we give me just a moment, I'll see if I can flip it over very carefully with these tweezers. So the way the chip, the ICs work is they are uh, bonded onto the base. So now I'll put this back in the same place and hopefully, see the penny coming to place, there you go. I flip the, the die over and this is our CD4017 die. Now you see this is much more zoomed out than we had before. And in fact, if we go ahead and try and find out the one on the table, there you go, it's quite small. Um, it's like our focus because it's now a different height. But we can see this one's uh, very similar in size, but we can go ahead and zoom in because as I say, this has got a 40 to 1000 zoom. And if I go ahead and zoom in, it will go out of focus, but eventually, hopefully we'll come back into focus, assuming we're in the range of the focus on this device and we should be able to see the IC itself much more clearly. And there we go. So now you go, so you can actually see this, this uh, die is probably slightly bigger actually than the previous one, because I can't get quite the whole thing in shot at the same time. Now, of course it's slightly closer to the lens, but because um, it's sitting on that penny, um, but yeah, that's a good comparison. And then we can see some of the relief here. And I think this is the relief on the crown still. Yeah, that would be the edge of the crown. And if we go past here, we can see this is the bottom of the R, and this is the stroke on the R, and the round bit as well. And then we can go back to the die. So obviously I've only just decapped this one for you right now, so I don't know if there is a better die shot, a proper disassembled die shot that we can look at. Um, if I do find one when I produce this video, I will pop it in. Now, something you'll notice between the die shots that I will be able to insert, such as the 555 from earlier, it doesn't have the multicolored layers 
that you see in the classic shots you see online. And part of the reason is that this is simply decapped. The full disassembly process would require removing the metal layer that's on top here that connects all of the individual tracks and layers of the IC. And first you would typically remove the metal layer and then you would continue to scan and highlight the different materials the different layers are made of. But even with the metal layer still intact, we can see some interesting patterns here. This includes all of the bond points here where all the bond wires would have been attached. We can see some interesting zigzag patterns here as well. Um, some of these might be transistors, for example. Often they are driving transistors, which might require large areas on the die. Some of the traces may well be resistors and so forth to create the functionality of the chip. But nonetheless, I hope you found this video interesting um, and I hope to speak to you again soon in the next one.